My dear brothers and sisters, I would like to speak to you something very, very, very important in, which is going to influence our life once and for all. And just listen very carefully. And it is going to be a life-changing experience if you really believe what we are going to listen today. And um, we all know in the church, for the Christians, the most important days are these coming, these three days. Uh, especially from Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and then this, uh, the Good Saturday, Holy Saturday, and the Easter, Easter Vigil. From Monday, Thursday, to the resurrection of Jesus. These three, four days is very important for the Holy Catholic Church, for all the Christians. And uh, what is the importance of this? Why it is going to be so life-changing one? In the previous talk, I spoke to you about the importance of the resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus is the most theme, the most important theme of the gospel. The resurrection of our Lord Jesus. The most important theme of the gospel is the resurrection. But today, I am going to speak to you. Right now, in this hour, we are going to speak about very important, the second point. Or it, it cannot be called a second, but that is the most important, along with the resurrection. What is that? That is about the Eucharist. About I'm going to speak to you about the Eucharist because now thousands and millions of people are missing the Holy Eucharist. Especially on Monday, Thursday, most of you, majority of you, almost 99% of you are watching and li listening to me, could not go to Holy Eucharist celebration, receive communion. And majority of you were missing Holy Eucharist in these last so many weeks. And it may, you may miss the Holy Eucharist for coming so many weeks and maybe some months. We do not know. But why the Holy Eucharist is so powerful and important? Let us listen. In the Bible, in the Old Testament, the whole Old Testament is the shadow of the New Testament. The whole Old Testament is the shadow of the New Testament. Everything that happened in the Old Testament, especially in the life of Moses and Exodus, it is already, we can see in the life of Jesus. What is in the Old Testament is only a shadow, but the most powerful one is in the New Testament. And we all know, Moses is the Old Testament Moses, and Jesus is the New Testament Moses. We all know the comparison and parallelism, which we have already discussed in the coming last uh, two weeks ago. In one of the homilies, I was discussing about it, and uh, it must have, many of you must have attended that. So, my dear brothers and sisters, there is a parallelism that you can see between Moses and Jesus. Let us see, let us speak some connection between the Old Testament and New Testament. Everything that we see in the Old Testament is the shadow of the New Testament, and the greater one is in the New Testament. The lesser one is in the Old Testament. That is why Jesus himself when he was preaching about himself, when he was speaking about himself, we read like this, Jesus himself said, there is something greater than temple is here. When he spoke about himself, there is something greater than temple is here. There is something greater than Solomon is here. There is great, something greater than Jonah is here. There is something greater than David is here. There is something greater than Moses is here. So the New Testament he is greater than the Old Testament. And Old Testament is only a shadow. Now we are going to take one by one some points from the Old Testament. And let us see what happened in the New Testament. We read in the life of, uh, we read in the life of saying, um, you know, Moses. In the life of Moses, something very special happened. We are going to show it on the screen. One by one, everything. The first point, when Moses was, uh, uh, when Moses was in the, uh, uh, Moses was born when Moses was born children were killed we read like this when Moses was born children were killed and we also know from Jesus Matthew chapter 2 verse 16 when Jesus was born children were killed let's read the next one and when Moses was born children were kill killed and when Jesus was born children were killed continue the next one continue uh, show more and brought up when Jesus, Jesus was brought up, 
though jesus was not an egyptian he was brought up in egypt though Je moses was not an egyptian he was also brought up in egypt and the next one and jesus here moses when he started the exodus he passed through the water exodus chapter 14 verse 22 jesus when he when he uh, when started the public ministry he also passed through the water show every continuously and uh, let's continue jesus passed through the water and moses also passed through the water jesus went to the desert after the passing through the water that is baptism but baptism is the passing through of the water of jesus and after that he went to the desert and then the same way moses also after passing through the water he went to the desert and we read moses after passing through the water he went to the desert in the desert he was tested and even the people he was tested by the people this a temptation even the people also was tested in the in the wilderness in the desert the same way we can also see after passing through the water that is baptism jesus went to the wilderness and there he was tested by the devil and the first temptation of jesus was the regarding food in the old testament the first temptation which moses went through with the people was regarding food food and water and the next one we read like this next one we read uh, the first temptation after that the we read angels waited on him angels waited on him angels waited on him angels waited on jesus after the temptation we also read in exodus chapter 23 verse 20 angels waited on moses after the temptation we read jesus fasted for 40 days we also read moses fought, uh, fasted for 40 days and we also read law the old testament law was given on the mountain in exodus 19:3 we also uh, read from the bible jesus gave the new testament law from the sermon on the mount that also was given on the mount and after the uh, law that was given on sir, sir, uh, on the mount sinai jesus came down and selected 12 leaders for each tribe 12 leaders were selected we also read after the sermon on the mount jesus comes down and select 12 apostles and we read in the old testament after some time moses selects 70 elders to lead the israelites we also read from gospel of luke chapter 10 verse verse 1 jesus is selecting 70 elders to preach the gospel and we also read in exodus chapter 34 verse 29 the face of moses become radiant face of moses become radiant and after talking to god on mount sinai the face of moses became radiant we read in the matthew chapter 17 verse 2 what matthew 17 uh, matthew 17 2 we read um, jesus face was shining after the transfiguration after the transfiguration the face of jesus was shining and we also read in the old testament moses fed the israelites thousands of people were fed by moses by bringing manna from heaven that is in exodus chapter 16 verse 4 and we also read in matthew chapter 14 verse 13 to 23 jesus is multiplying five loaves of bread for five thousand people and we also read in the old testament in the new testament when jesus was you know jesus was performing miracles uh, jesus was performing so many miracles before the passover before the passover jesus was performing so many miracles we also read from the old testament before the passover moses also performed so many miracles before the passover we read gospel of john chapter 12 verse 28 when god spoke to Mo jesus when god spoke to jesus there was thunder and lightning in heaven and then jesus told the people these lightning and thunder happened only for you we read exodus chapter 20 verse 18 to 19 when god spoke to moses there was thunder and lightning and moses told the people this miracle happened only for you when jesus performed miracles jesus himself called this miracle as the finger of god these miracles are done by the finger of god 
we read in Exodus chapter 8 verse 19, looking at the miracles of Moses, the people around, they said, especially the magicians of Egypt, they said, he is performing miracle by the finger of God. And we read the first miracle of Jesus. The first miracle of Moses was this. Uh, Exodus chapter 7 verse 20. We read the first miracle of Moses was this. He turned water into uh, blood. Water turned into blood. We read the first miracle of Jesus was this. John 2 9. He turned water into wine. The last miracle is the wine turned into blood. So what Moses performed, more powerfully Jesus performed. And the last one, and that is what, I, what I'm going to point out today. During this one hour talk, I'm going to make, make use of this passage. That is uh, Exodus chapter 24, verse 18. We read, there is uh, the, the, the blood covenant that is taking place on Sinai. The Sinai covenant is called blood covenant. In the New Testament, when Jesus celebrated the Eucharist, he called it is a blood covenant. This is my blood and this is an eternal covenant. The long lasting eternal covenant that Jesus spoke about it. Now my dear brothers and sisters. What is the speciality of the Old Testament and New Testament? I told you already. Old Testament is the shadow of the New Testament. And Old Testament is lesser and the New Testament is higher. All what happened in the uh, Old Testament is only a shadow, but the New Testament is the real one. We know about Moses and the, we know about the New Testament Moses, that is Jesus himself. If Moses was just a prophet, but Jesus, his word became flesh. And he is God himself, the second per person of the Holy Trinity. In the Old Testament, all what happened is happening in the New Testament. In Old Testament, Moses did with the help of God. And God was speaking to Moses and God, Moses was speaking to God. But in the New Testament, we don't see God speaking to Jesus. But we see Jesus speaking to the people. When Moses spoke to the people, Moses said, Thus says God. Thus says God. But in the New Testament, when Jesus was speaking to the people, Jesus said, I am saying to you. I say to you, I say to you, the I am sayings of Jesus. It means the, the, the same God who spoke to Moses is the one who is speaking to the people face to face. And that is very important. If that is the case, what is the importance of the New Testament covenant? What is the covenant in the New Testament? The New Testament means, Testament means covenant. The New Testament and Old Testament. That means there is a covenant, old covenant or old testament and there is a new covenant or a new testament. If the new covenant is the last supper and sacrifice on Mount Calvary, let us read what is the old covenant. If you want to know what is the old covenant, then that is what we read from Sinai covenant. What is the speciality of the Sinai covenant? Once you know the importance of the Sinai covenant, then you will see the importance of the covenant, that the new covenant, that is the New Testament. We are going to read one by one and examine the importance of the Sinai covenant and the Eucharist in the New Covenant. Let us read Exodus chapter 24, verse 1. Exodus chapter 24, verse 1. Let's read. This is very important. Exodus chapter 24, verse 1. Let's read. Then... God said to Moses, Come up to the Lord, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship at a distance. Then he said to Moses, Come up to the Lord, you and Aaron, and Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship at a distance. God is already creating a kind of hierarchy. Moses is the closest to God. Aaron and Ad Nadab and Abihu, they are some far away from Moses. And 70 of the elders are far away from these three people. And the people of God are far away from all of them. And the verse second, second word, we read like this. Moses alone, God said, Moses alone shall come near the Lord. But the others shall not come near. And the people shall not come up with him. Moses alone shall come near the Lord, 
but the other shall not come near and the people shall not come up with him next verse 3 Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the ordinances see you can imagine the scene God is there on the top and Moses is sitting next to God close to God and Moses is listening to God away from Moses there are three people Aaron Nadab and Abihu away from these three people 70 elders away from all of them the people of God standing there there is a hierarchy you can see and after talking to God Moses came back to the people and Moses told the people all the words of the Lord and all the ordinances and all the people answered with one voice and said all the words of the Lord has spoken we will do see before entering into a covenant the both parties parties should agree with the terms and conditions of the covenant now God is producing the terms and conditions and Moses is bringing the terms of conditions in front of the people and all the people agreed that the terms and conditions we we agree with that they agreed that we will do it so next word let's read in the next word then and Moses wrote down all the agreements Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord he rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain he wrote down all the agreement the contract or maybe the covenant the covenant is greater than contract and agreement covenant is very powerful Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord he rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and set up 12 pillars and corresponding to the 12 tribes of Israel now you can see in, in the imagination you can bring something you can get some connection here See, Moses is preparing an altar. Around the altar, Moses is setting up 12 pillars. What is that you see now? In your imagination, if you are able to see, there is something you can see in the New Testament. The New Covenant. The, we all know the New Covenant is Last Supper and Sacrifice on Mount Calvary. Two things are there in the New Covenant. Last Supper and Sacrifice on Mount Calvary. So what happened in the Last Supper? When Jesus and the disciples are sitting around the table, there is a table, the altar. And then around the altar, there are 12, 12 apostles, the pillars of the church. The 12 apostles are the pillars of the church. They are there around the altar. That means Moses is preparing an, the, the Old Testament Sinai covenant. He built an altar at the foot of the mountain. Mountain is a symbol of God. At the foot of the mountain, he prepared an altar and set up 12 pillars. Now you can see the Last Supper. Uh, there is a table and 12 disciples and then the sign in the mountain is Jesus, the sign of God. And he's not just sign of God, God himself on one side and all the 12 disciples around it. Then what happened? Then we can, re we can see a sacrifice is taking place on this altar. A sacrifice is taking place on this altar. Let's read verse 5. Verse 5, we read like this. He sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed oxen as offerings of well-being to the Lord. We read... Jesus, uh, sorry, the Old Testament, Moses sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings. There is a burnt offering taking place. Sacrifices were done. done. Not one, but many oxes. The oxen were uh, killed, sacrificed. And then, what did Moses do? Next one, verse 6. Verse 6, we read like this. Then Moses took half of the blood, put it in basins. There are half of the blood and half of the blood. Two half blood. That means... Uh, one, two basins, one basin full of half blood, the other basin full of half, rest of the half blood. And what did he do? Half of the blood he dashed against the altar. He poured out on the altar. Half of the blood. As a symbol that God is entering into this covenant. God is actively participating in this covenant. And God has already agreed all the terms and conditions of the covenant. So God has already agreed as a sign 
uh, Moses is putting off of the blood on the altar. And then continue reading. Then we read, Moses, after putting off of the blood on the altar, that means Mo God agreed the terms and condition and he is participating in this covenant. Then Moses took the blood and dashed it on. So verse 17, sorry, verse 7, read verse 7. 24. Then he took the book of the covenant. Book of the covenant means this covenant was already written down. You know, this is what Moses heard from God. So he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they all said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. We will be obedient. That means they said, Amen. They said, Amen. In every sacrifice, God gives the prayer... God brings the first part and people respond with Amen. We all know, you can get the connection. In every Holy Eucharist, this is the same thing happens. And the priest says on behalf of God, the main celebrant, on behalf of Jesus, who prays the first prayer and all the people say Amen. And he took the book of the covenant, he read it in the hearing of the people and they said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do and we will be obedient. Verse 8. Next one. Moses took the blood and when people said, we, we are obedient, we will listen to you, we also agree the terms and conditions, then most Moses took the rest of the blood. We know half of the blood is already sprinkled on the altar as a sign God has entered into the covenant. Now Moses took the rest of the blood and dashed it on the people. By doing, the, doing that, even people also entered into the covenant of the same blood. And it said, See the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. And they both of them agreed. If you are able to imagine, you in your wild imagination, or maybe you can see an imagination here, there are one, so many thousands of people in one side, other side there is an altar where is the sacrifice is taken place and Moses is standing in the middle, he is having the basin of blood, one half the uh, half of the blood he poured it on the altar by doing so god has agreed and entered into the covenant and then he read out the terms and conditions in front of the people and people all said amen when people said amen he took the rest of the blood and sprinkled on the people now we can see both god and the people sprinkled by the blood of the lamb sacrificed by doing so both of them Entering into a relationship. What kind of relationship? Blood relationship. Same blood on them. Same blood on God. Same blood on the altar. That is a symbol of God. And same blood on the people. Both of them entered into a sacred family bond. God and people entered into a sacred family bond. That is why after this sacrifice. Mount Sinai sacrifice. We see God calls the Israel as my wife. God calls her, calls Israel, is my wife, I am her husband. God called Israel, you are my wife, I am your husband. That is a family relationship. They entered into a family relationship. God and human being become one. And just that is why husband and wife, once they are married, they become one. The same kind of oneness we can see in the Mount Sinai covenant. And now, remember... The Sinai covenant is not over here. It's very important. The Sinai covenant is not over here. Uh, you know, in the New Testament, the New Covenant has got two points, two moments in the Eucharist. New Covenant has got two points. Which are they? First one, Mount, the sacrifice on Mount Calvary. The second one, the Last Supper. What he celebrated in the Last Supper, he actualized there on the cross. These two moments are like two sides of the same coin. Two sides of the same coin. In the last supper, Jesus took the bread and wine. He took the bread and said, this is my body. He took the wine and said, this is my blood. He never said, taking the bread, he never said, this is my body and blood. But instead he said, this is my body, this is my blood. By separating the body from the blood, in fact... Jesus was celebrating his death in the last supper. Suppose if the blood is separated from your flesh, what will happen? If the blood is separated from your flesh, you will die. 
in the last supper jesus separated the body and separated the blood by separating the body from the flesh he was celebrating his death in the last supper and what he celebrated in the last supper he actualized there on the cross what happened on the cross he shed even the last to drop of blood and water he shed from mount calvary what he celebrated in the last supper he actualized there on the cross therefore the holy eucharist has got two moments like two sides of the same coin which cannot be separated from one cannot be separated from the another the two moments are one is last supper a meal a meal a supper a meal second one is sacrifice so two two points now let's go back to the sinai covenant in the sinai covenant we were just reflecting about it we know there is a sacrifice taken place blood sacrifice has taken place it is not over let us continue exodus chapter 20 exodus chapter 24 was was 6 was 6 on okay was 6 on was moses took half of the blood and put it in basins and half of the blood he dashed against the altar next one was 7 then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people and they said all that the lord has spoken we will do and we will be obedient they said amen was 8 was 8 Moses took the blood and dashed it on the people and said see the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words was 9 and then we read then you know you just remember one more thing i have told you already but just want to remind you again and again because we are entering into the most important aspect of the Sinai covenant the most important aspect of the Sinai covenant remember with the sacrifice of the blood the sinai covenant is not over after the sprinkling of the blood on the people and on, on, also on the altar the sinai covenant is continuing we are the sinai covenant is entering into the second part what is the second part continue reading we read then moses aaron nadab abihu and 70 of the elders of israel went up went up where went up to where let us see they went up went up we see where did they went up and they saw they went up bible say they went up and they saw the god of israel in order to see god face to face where did they go up where would have then where would have they go up, gone up they have gone up to heaven moses abihu nadab and aaron aaron and 70 people all of them they went up not to the mountain they went up to heaven that is why they saw the god of israel face to face now listen how do we know where they went up to heaven because we read after that what what did they see in front of god what did they see under the feet of god under his feet there was something like a pavement of sapphire stone like the very heaven like the very heaven for clearness what does it mean after the blood sacrifice that they did on mount sinai all these people 70 elders and three uh, priest three priest aaron abihu and nadab they are priest and moses moses is also priest high priest and moses all of them they went up to heaven like the very heaven and he says they saw god face to face under his feet there was something like a pavement of sapphire stone you know the sapphire stone if you read in the bible where do we find the sapphire stone if you read ezekiel chapter 126 ezekiel chapter 1 verse 26 ezekiel chapter 1 verse 26 the sapphire stone is found in one place where is this found sapphire stone is found found 126 we read like this and above the dome over their heads there was something like a throne in appearance like sapphire and seated above the likeness of a throne was something that seemed like a human form we read in the bible there is a prophecy in the ezekiel chapter 1 verse 26 about jesus seated on the throne of heaven like human form means jesus sitting on the throne and under that there is sapphire stone it is mentioned in ezekiel chapter 1 verse 
Let's also read Ezekiel chapter 10 verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 10 verse 1. Then I looked and above the dome that was over the heads of the cherubim, there appeared above them something like a sapphire in form resembling a throne. Resembling a throne. So, there is a heaven, you can find this sapphire stone. And what does it mean? Let us go back, Exodus chapter 24 verse 10. Once again, let's read. On they went up to heaven and they saw God face to face. And they saw God face to face. And under the feet, under the feet of God, there was something like a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. And next one, verse 11. God did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. Because according to the understanding of Jewish people, all those who see God face to face, they should be killed or they should be dead. But here, those saw, they, though they saw God face to face, God did not lay the hands on them. And the next word is very important. And there in heaven, they beheld God. Beheld God or behold God means they saw God. They saw God face to face and they ate and drank. Now, what did they eat? What did they drink? When they went up, they did not carry anything food eatable. They did not carry, God never told them, come with some food so that we can have food on the, in heaven. God did not tell them to carry any food. They did not carry any food. And it is not a earthly food because they went to the heaven. They went to the heaven, they saw God and then ate and drink. drink. What does it mean? They saw God face to face and they ate and drink. Then what did they eat and drink? You can see the last supper here. In the last supper, what, what happened to the tall disciples? They saw God face to face and then they ate the bread and they drink the wine. And this bread and wine is not ordinary bread and wine. Because when Israelites, in, in, in Moses and the elders, when they ate and drink, they did not in, eat and they did not drink anything that is of this earth. They did drink and eat in heaven. That means they ate heavenly food. Something supernatural. Something heavenly meal. Remember, the Old Testament is only a shadow. The New Testament is more important. The Old Testament is lesser and the New Testament is higher. Old Testament is a shadow. The New Testament is more powerful, real. If that's the case, the meal that Moses and the elders ate in the presence of God, if, it's, if it is so supernatural, if it is heavenly meal, then let me tell you how much important, more important should be the Last Supper. How much more important should be given it is a heavenly meal. It is a sacred meal. It is a supernatural meal, supernatural meal where the disciples were able to see God face to face in the presence of God. They ate the heavenly body and the heavenly blood of Jesus. And this is important, my dear brothers and sisters. If you know the power of this, what I have told you, explained to you, if you know the importance of it, you will be shocked when you come for the Holy Eucharist. Because just imagine, you can in your imagination, you can see Moses and the, all the 70 elders and all the priests, they are in the heavenly heaven, like very heaven. They went to the heaven itself, they fa saw face to face with God and then they ate and drink. Such a supernatural scene you can see. And now it is only Old Testament. And then the New Testament, the same thing is repeated, but here on earth. Because in the Old Testament, the people, Moses and the elders were taken to heaven. But in the New Testament, heaven came down to the last upper room, the upper room. Heaven came down. Every altar where you celebrate the Holy Mass, the heaven is coming down, my dear brothers and sisters, where you see God face to face and eat and drink. This is very important, my dear brothers and sisters. 
in the old testament they were lifted up towards heaven in the new testament heaven comes down on your altar if you know the power of the holy eucharist meaning of the therefore remember in the sinai covenant means there are two moments there are two moments in the sinai covenant one is sacrifice of the bloody sacrifice the other one is bloodless meal one is bloody sacrifice the other one is bloodless meal the na- the same way in the new testament you can see a bloody sacrifice that is taking place in the mount calvary and the bloodless sacrifice that is taking place in the last supper a meal and the meal and sacrifice the meal and sacrifice in sinai covenant and a meal and sacrifice in the new covenant if the sinai covenant is lesser and the new covenant is greater because we read in the bible many passages in the old testament especially especially in the prophet of isaiah prophet of ezekiel prophet of jeremiah god says i am going to enter into a new covenant with the israel which is greater than the covenant that i have made with the made with the sinai covenant it is greater the new covenant will be greater than the sinai covenant god has already told the people many times therefore the people were waiting for a more powerful covenant a powerful covenant than the sinai covenant and that is what we call new testament or new covenant so my dear brothers and sisters what i am trying to say is this is very important i hope you understood what i was trying to say in this last nearly 45 minutes and this is the most important aspect of the your faith today you are missing this eucharist and maybe god is preparing you to enter into a serious holy eucharist celebration as soon as covid 19 situation changes your faith in the eucharist will be different you will thirst for the eucharist you will cry for eucharist and when you receive the holy communion after so many months for the first time you all will shed tears i can assure you i can guarantee you you are going to shed tears when you receive the holy communion you are going to see god face to face and in front of you, in the presence of god you are going to eat the heavenly meal and drink the heavenly blood there is no doubt about it and this is what i would like to share with you my dear brothers and sisters and therefore if you are if you get any chance these days please go through this talk once again and understand the meaning of the difference between the sinai covenant and the new covenant old covenant and new covenant and understand the power of the new covenant if the sinai covenant has got two points two moments the new covenant has also got two moments sacrifice and the meal and in the new testament sacrifice on mount calvary and the meal in the last supper if the meal that in the, happened in the old testament has taken place in heaven the meal that happened in the upper room the heaven came down in the meal that they celebrated in the sinai they saw god face to face and they ate and drank in the new testament covenant the upper room the disciples saw god face to face in jesus and they ate and drank the heavenly meal that is the body and blood of jesus so let's close our eyes for a moment just reflect what you heard my dear brothers and sisters you have heard the most powerful secret of the eucharist the most powerful information about the importance of the holy eucharist if the old testament meal was so heavenly and sacred the new testament meal the last supper will be more heavenly and more sacred not just more the best the highest the biggest the most powerful if that's the case such a most powerful celebration the holy eucharist you are missing it for the last 2 3 weeks the most powerful the biggest and the highest powerful you are the eucharist you are missing for the last 2 3 weeks we are unable to receive it this is a great loss my dear brothers and sisters we may not have seen the importance and power of this sacred meal the holy meal but now you know the importance therefore at least shed at least one drop of tear in front of the lord and say lord sorry there were so many occasions so many opportunities where we could have celebrated or the eucharist not just one but many we got chances 
but we did not take it seriously, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Give us one more chance. At least receive the Holy Communion. At least once, let me allow, allow me to celebrate this heavenly meal, sacred meal, the highest and biggest, the most powerful meal. The heaven where heaven comes down and where I was, I'm able to see God face to face. In every Holy Eucharist, when the priest lifts up the bread and says, this is the body of Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. You are able to see God face to face and then next moment you take and drink and take and eat. This is very important, my dear brothers and sisters. Therefore, today when you celebrate the Mass, we are going to celebrate the Holy Mass today. We are going to celebrate the Mass soon. Right now, we are going to prepare ourselves to celebrate the Holy Mass before you celebrate the Holy Mass. How to celebrate the Holy Mass more meaningfully and powerfully? How to celebrate it? That is what we are going to reflect for some time. When you come to the Holy Eucharist, especially when you come to the Holy Eucharist, remember, you come around the altar, in the offertory time, when the priest prepares the bread and wine. That is the time the priest is lifting up the bread and he makes a prayer. He lifts up the wine and he makes a prayer. And during this time, the Lord is begging in front of you for something. What is that he's begging for? He's begging in front of you. My dear brothers and sisters, I'm going to start a I'm going to start the way of the cross to the Mount Calvary. Do you have anything to offer along with this bread and wine? Do you have anything to offer along with this bread and wine? Every holy Eucharist. Jesus, the priest is lifting up the bread and lifting up the wine and is begging in front of you. Do you have anything to offer along with this bread and wine? If you have something to offer, offer it right now. And that moment you are supposed to offer your problems, your worries, your tension, your sickness, your husband, your wife, your children. Everything should be offered on the altar along with the bread and wine. Then after that, you carry the bread and wine. That is not just bread and wine after the offertory. It is no more bread, it is no more wine. It becomes the body and blood of our Lord Jesus. It's not, it's not body and blood. It becomes the, the life of each and every one of us. After the offertory, it becomes our life. Your problem, my problem, everyone's problem is in the bread and wine. Then Jesus carries our problem. He carries our life. He carries our sickness. He carries our problem to the Mount Calvary. There on the Mount Calvary, He lifts up what? He lifts up not, not, a, not any bread and wine, but he lifts up our life in the bread. He, love, he lifts up our life and problems, worries in the blood, in the wine. He lifts up it and say, my dear brothers and sisters, this is not your life. This is my body. He lifts up the wine and said, this is not your problems, your sickness, your worries. This is my blood. And after that, it becomes the body and blood of Jesus. What becomes the body and blood? Your life will be turned, to, turned into the body and blood of Jesus. Along with the bread and wine, the transubstantiation taking place, not only for the bread and wine, but also transformation taking place for us. Because in the bread and wine, it is my life and your life. Everyone's life is there in the bread and wine. This bread and wine is taken by Jesus and bless it and transform it, change it to his body and blood. When the bread and wine becomes the body and blood of Jesus, remember the transformation takes place not only for the bread and wine, but also for my life. What happens to my life? My problem, my worries, my tension, my sickness, it becomes the body of Jesus. It becomes the blood of Jesus. Then why should I cry now? Why should I worry now? Your problem is no more yours, but of Jesus. Your sickness is no more yours, but of Jesus. Your husband, your wife, your children are no more yours, but of Jesus. Your, fa uh, the, uh, your fear about future is no more yours, but of Jesus. Because it became the body and blood of Jesus. Then why should you worry? Why should you tense? So this is the biggest strength that we receive when we celebrate the Holy Eucharist, my dear brothers and sisters.